escucha. All right, so welcome guys, uh, welcome everyone. I would say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I know that uh, many people are connecting from any piece of the world. I have a lot of subscribers from uh, from Europe, but also from US, from uh, from Asian markets. So welcome everyone, and uh, welcome to the second session of uh, the last available room webinar series. Let's go through the slide just to give you, you know, some uh, some concept around this project. Uh, this is a webinar series that uh, the intention is to put together travel and uh, and hospitality experts to discuss latest trends in the in the industry. And uh, the main topics every time we will discuss something different, but mostly we will discuss about online distribution, revenue management, online marketing, technology, new trends, and stuff like that. Uh, to participate at this webinar is free, so just subscribe to the, just go to regain.com, find out the event section, and you will see the webinar landing page where you can uh, subscribe. Um, this is going to be a kind of panel format, so I will be the moderator together with my friend Simone Porto, and every time we have three or four different guest speakers, everybody, you know, so... We'll meet people from the hoteliers side, from the IT providers. Sometimes could be someone from big company like Expedia, right? And uh, we always have, you know, this webinar duration about 60 minutes. And uh, you guys uh, can interact with us through the the chat of uh, the the chat of the GoToMeeting system. Um, this is the series. Basically, the first session is already gone. So it was about the reparity issue, and we did this webinar the 29th of May. Today, the topics, the main topic is going to be revenue vs marketing. Um, and the next four session, normally we do one webinar every two months. So the next one is going to be in September, then we got one in November, one in January, and another one in March. Okay. Right. So what this. Uh, a little bit unique of this webinar session that the intention is to every time run this webinar in a, in a very nice location. So the first session actually was performed live at Ushuaia in Ibiza, which hotel. And today, actually, I'm in Nelia, Barcelona. So I'm conducting this webinar from the business lounge of uh, the executive floor of the Nelia Barcelona Sky. That's an amazing hotel, guys. Really, if you come to Barcelona one day, you have to spend at least one night in this amazing hotel. Right, so the topics today are going to be again around the importance and the alignment between revenue marketing. So we will discuss a little bit of the main challenge hoteliers are facing within the revenue and marketing management, the current scenarios of the right approach for a winning and aligned strategy. And of course, we will share some best practice, suggestion and tools available on the market. Uh, those are our special guests, so let me introduce you guys, Remco West, founder of uh, X-Hotel. Hi, Remco, how are you? Can you hear us? You have your microphone off. Maybe it's off? No, it's on. Great, thank you. Cool, man. So can you just give us a little bit of uh, your background, what you do with X-Hotel? Just give us a little bit an overview about your company and your role within the company. Uh, certainly, yeah, and as you mentioned, I'm, I'm one of the founders of, uh, of X Hotels. Um, we are a hotel management company with a specialization in, in revenue management. Uh, besides revenue management, we also do a lot of marketing, mainly online marketing uh, for, uh, for our clients. Um, we run close to 90 properties right now across the globe. That's great. I mean, quite a lot. So what is your challenge tomorrow? Um, sorry, my challenge related to? Well, I mean, what is your going to be your next challenge? I mean, you have a lot of hotels to manage. But what is your main challenge every day, man? You're meeting. 
Um, uh, keeping up with the latest developments, making sure that uh, that revenue managers, marketeers, and hoteliers are are all in line to set up the right strategy um, and and um, to keep up with uh, uh, all technology uh, technological uh, developments uh, across the globe uh, to keep up with consumers. I'm sure you do you do very well. Right, so next one is Martin, Martin Soler, which is partner at Soler and Associate. He's a, he's a founder. Mar Martin is, a, is an old friend of mine and uh, he's a very well known on the market as uh, digital marketing. He's actually a cool guy, always have uh, new ideas, new, new concepts to bring on the table. So, hi Martin, how are you? Thanks for coming. Thank you. I'm good. Where are you based now? Glad to be invited. I'm based in Paris. Right now I'm in Burgundy, but I'm based in Paris. Right, right. So can you tell us a little bit about you, what you do? I know that you're organizing some nice also events and training about you know, IT, startup, technology. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So I consult uh, and we at Solar Associates, we work with primarily hotel technology companies and some hotels. Uh, and we help uh, basically build the bridge between the hotel technology and hotels. Because I previously was a hotelier and then uh, we worked together at, at WIP and hotel marketing for many years. And then I was a CMO of a, a hotel technology company. Uh, I've managed to have a bit of experience on all these um, different sectors and so I help other technology companies now to to link between what they do their products making sure their products are actually helpful for hotels and then uh, helping actually reach hotels and, and you know building that bridge between the technology and hotels and and often you know technology tends to live in a little bubble where they think they have changed the world but a hotelier has different problems. He's got to take care of mattresses, carpets, curtains, uh, leaks, shouting clients at front desk. And it's important to have that understanding of that world when you're working on technology solutions. Yeah, sometimes we forget that the hotels, of course, we always try to pursue the hoteliers to invest and uh, update their strategy by using the latest technology. But sometimes we forget that in the hotels there are so many, many Asian travel every day. I used to work in the hotels, too, so know what you're talking about. And uh, really, sometimes we have to, you know, short the gap between, you know, technology provider and hotels. And uh, that's why we are here today, so discussing, putting together IT provider and, hotel, and hotels. And try to find the best way, you know, to, to optimize the the daily, you know, execution. So thanks yeah. for coming here again, Martin. And uh, Anupam, how are you, man? This is my colleague, you're based in Delhi. And thanks for being guest of uh, this webinar today. Uh, give us, you know, a little bit of your background, what you do in Regain. Thank you, Enzo. Um, just a about me, um, I was a hotelier before. And so That's mostly, right. I think so I can... Well, you, are running, sorry, you, you were all hoteliers, but you're running out of the hotels, guys. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, typically, yes. Um, so I have a lot, I could have a lot of colleagues, you know, and ex-colleagues as well on the other side of the webinar who would be the attendees too. And for good about seven years, I was heading operations and uh, I worked in different kind of hotels, be it a business, luxury or heritage hotels, different mixes all together. And this was one of the largest hotel chains uh, globally. It's called Taj Group of Hotels. And uh, post which I did my revenue management from Cornell University. And uh, I was heading about a cluster of uh, hotels for revenue function in Northern India. And then after I joined Raid Gain, somebody in Raid Gain poached me from there. So here I am, I've been here for about three years. And uh, I am a product owner for the business intelligence products. So what I help technology company, somebody like me who's a co-hotelier and sitting right inside a technology company is somewhat 
how is it that you know really can the technology bit make the life of the hoteliers very very easy because the largest challenges which everybody had was adapting to the technology i tried making them very very simple for them and building them reflecting it in the products as well so uh, for my product uh, we have a good client base of close to around 2000 customers and we help them you know get better in terms of the marketing the revenues and the online reputation using the whole product suite that's great so thank you and i'm sure you are going to share some nice best practices later right so let's move on next one is going to be me well you know me a little bit uh, i'm the head of marketing at ricking and uh, i'm also the coordinator of this webinar series i'm actually doing a lot of other things guys so you know what i'm doing mostly my time i share everything to linkedin so anything you want to be updated from my side you just follow me on linkedin just add me on your network and uh, you get update every day right so and uh, now simone simone is going to help me during this you know adventure with this webinar series and is going to work next to me as a moderator so actually is a very uh, cool guy simone i been working with him in the past um he's a very expert and uh, but he has a very well known this industry so thanks simone to join this webinar uh, but anyway i would like you to share some you know of your background what you do and then we can start yeah sure so thank you for having me and of course my role today will be you know uh just to moderate you and by itself it's a hell of a job and uh you know on top of that i come from a similar background as you guys so been working in hospitality pretty much all my life started in 99 uh ended up managing two hotels then i moved to consultancy uh opened my own consultancy firm and for the last year and a half uh i'm mainly working with travel tech companies and uh writing uh and academic so uh, lecturing uh, writing articles data collecting and uh, consulting the consultants so that is basically what i am doing consulting the of consultants yeah is it an escalation here guys <laughs> yeah we need i will probably need a consultant for myself as well at some point you know so that will be the consultant of a consultant of a consultant right. all right cool so let's get into the into the topics today so before to start to make a question i would like just to quickly share this infograph with you let me open in a pdf maybe it's much better visible so basically, as I told you, this is the topics today, guys. We are going to talk about the alignment between revenue and marketing. So we all know that those are the two most relevant departments within the within the hotels. So actually, there is also the sales aspect. Uh, but the curiosity was to understand how those two roles in the market are so relevant. So I was trying to make this research to LinkedIn, and actually, what I did. Um, I tape um, these keywords only manager and it came up with a 61 million you know results within LinkedIn so there are a lot of managers around the world you know that then I was trying to understand okay from the manager point of view now how many of them are working within the hospitality vertical so and from that numbers we go down to hotel manager of a little bit more than two million right so which represent the 3.4 percent of the global you know uh, role of manager and then actually uh, my intention was to understand okay how many marketers are there and how many revenue managers are there and then the, the funny things here i see that actually for uh, every two marketers we have one revenue manager so the number of marketers actually is double right so as you can see here there are one million of marketers compared to half million of revenue right and then i did this research going more deeper you know by country and uh, as you can see united states are the biggest country where you can find more marketers and more revenue manager compared to any other country and then i did some little you know funny comparison for example between france and germany so how many marketers we have in france okay and how many right so you can see from this you know infograph how those you know two roles are split between you know each country and uh, anyway 
uh, this infograph is going to be available guys I'm going to send you after the webinar or you just take me or send me just a quick email remind you to share this infograph with you if you want to know more right and uh, of course after doing this research we did um, this very nice article I worked together with Simone so I would really suggest you guys to go through keynotes find out this article why marketing and revenue department should bury the hatchet right now so this is the URL I'm not asking you guys to copy right now this URL again I will share this slide with you after the webinar but it's really interesting to read these topics also from uh, you know a point of view which is more detailed uh, we have a lot of quotes from some hoteliers within this article so that's it right so let's start now uh, the first one is gonna be Martin Martin I'm going to share the slide for you okay so I know you have only two slides so I have uploaded your slide within my presentation um, so I can I can move the slide for you so basically the question I'm going to make you are why do you think there are for every revenue manager two marketing manager and well as you said you work in the both side huh? in the hotels and the, in the IT travel so what is the current scenario in those two spaces and how those two roles should combine and strategize their effort for a winning and synchronized strategy from your point of view. Right? So words to you, this is your first slide. Yeah. So in my opinion, uh, we have two different uh, functions because historically there has been marketing the OSM director of sales and marketing existed since a long time uh, and that has that position has been filled for many many years revenue management came later and it became its own thing however when you look at any marketing uh, on any product pricing distribution has always been an essential part of it so it's a bizarre concept that today there are two departments in hotels where one is taking care of uh, marketing where in, in fact they're not really taking care of marketing they're taking care of promotion and then you have revenue which is probably doing more marketing than marketing because pricing and distribution are the two most important most critical parts of any marketing strategy especially online where the guest knows pretty much where they want to go they know they are going to go to London. They pretty much know the area or they're discovering which areas to go. And then it's just a game of is it within their budget and is there availability <clears throat> and is that hotel just being distributed on the right channels. So I believe that difference between sales, uh, between marketing and revenue is going to disappear. Revenue management is. Um, revenue management is uh, needs to have marketing and, and I think a, a perfect example is how Remco who co-founded <coughs> X Hotels uh, is at, in the beginning revenue management but now does much much more and is obviously has to be involved in in marketing because there's just no way to go about uh, Either you can't do just revenue management without being involved in marketing you can't do marketing without being involved in revenue management so these are going to merge and if you look at the definition of of marketing in the Encyclopedia Britannica at least a part of the definition because it's very very long it's the sum of activities involved in directing the flow of goods and services from producers to consumers without pricing and distribution you do not have you're not directing flows of goods and services from producers to consumers so those are going to start merging and because we have so much data and revenue tends to be more uh, numbers uh, more comfortable with numbers than 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 regular marketing and promotion people um, they are obviously have the keys to much more data they're willing to look at much more information than your average uh, uh, marketing person is and with the amount of data we have online from clicks to conversions to uh, all of that data is just uh, critical for the marketing 
as it's coming as it is now uh, if you go in the next slide I don't know how visible that is uh, but it says uh, you know this is a pretty good overview of the different systems that are involved in distributing a hotel's rates and inventory and, and distributing a hotel online <coughs> uh, most of these systems are being controlled today with or by revenue and distribution which in some hotels very big hotels has been split but in majority is being combined this revenue distribution in one and you look at the tools that are at the core is the hotel and then as you sort of go out with the rings each ring actually is is more technology or, or a different layer of technology but most of these are being affected by by hotels, uh, by revenue management in hotels. And the last one, the, or the red one that you see, is called marketing, but essentially it's more promotion than marketing. You know, this is where you're going to make it uh, people aware of it. That is creating awareness, and you have then those channels which help generate awareness. Ads, meta search, uh, different levels of OTAs and, and distributors, and so on. But, um, majority is actually happening on a distribution and revenue level so so this that sort of difference needs to merge uh, between revenue and, and marketing because you just can't do one without the other then it's a matter of how are you going to mix the left brain right brain approach so that it's not just a bunch of numbers and just pushing rates uh, if you're running a luxury hotel you obviously want something where you can show the quality you can show how much uh, is going to be uh, how much service and how beautiful the rooms are and that is a problem where everything gets commoditized on on OTAs where no matter the hotel no matter the room type you will get 1000 pixels by 800 pixels picture and that's it and that's not good enough for a luxury hotel who wants bigger pictures to show much more of what's going on so <clears throat> in summary for me I, th I believe these are going to merge then we're going to have to find different channels as the CMO of booking.com has said and, and maybe that's a bit self-promotional for them but there is no cheaper way to acquire first-time visitors than using an OTA and I believe that is possibly true. If you have to have a hotel and it's not distributed anywhere, I don't know of a cheaper way to get visibility and get first time guests in without using an OTA that is as cheap as an OTA and as risk free. We could put out an ad in, in, in New York Times and it would get a lot of visits, but it would not get you that much uh, on the long term and the risk is very high. So it's a lot cheaper to go and say I'm going to use an OTA to do that and then figure out how are you going to balance out return visitors which are about 10 to 12 percent but if they're very frequent return visitors they do generate more than 20 percent of your revenues so that's going to be an interesting way to, uh, to uh, an interesting evolution is how to to use OTAs for that but then convert them into repeat bookers and if you have several hotels you obviously the you can scale that to repeat bookers on your other hotels and so forth martin yes can i ask you something uh that's that's pretty interesting so uh i was thinking about you know the the, the perception in the market is that uh marketing is at the early stage of the booking funnel and uh, revenue is at the very end uh, even though uh, we know that this is not always the case, this is probably never the case, okay? But whenever there is a lack of awareness of brand awareness, that's marketing fault, or whenever there is a lack of conversion, that's revenue fault, you know? And there's always this blame game. But uh, according to what you're saying, and I, and I agree 100%, I don't even have a doubt about the fact that, you know, um, being on an OTA is the best way to, to generate brand awareness. Uh, don't you think that this particular uh, choice, the choice to be on, you know, except for the for the Booking.com and Expedia Group, of course, but the choice to be on specific OTAs or to launch specific uh, uh, 
uh, promo or opaque rates uh, should be something that uh, should by revenue manager together with marketers that could then use that let's call it the billboard effect if it's a little demo day uh, to to finally convert this user in uh, direct channels if possible or at least with a with a lower uh, cost per acquisition what do you think about that yeah i think we're <coughs> sorry we're we're um where there is a big big need for pure marketing or pure i would say brand rather than marketing because marketing is such a broad subject we would say pure brand expert is is there is is putting uh doing a special offer on <clears throat> on hrs going to be beneficial or not for the brand on the long term and that's where revenue manager are going to be more focused on the numbers and the brand team needs to then uh, look at it and say, okay, that's not the way we're going to do it. Because if we send an email out, for example, to all our lists and say, you know, 50% discount for everybody, are we then as a luxury hotel going to take down our brand value? Uh, and that's where there is a lot of um, work that needs to be done uh, to, to not only go for the efficient on the short term, but what's going to be efficient on the long term as well. And that's, um, <clears throat> it's it's easy to generate quick clicks and quick conversions you take down the price and you can easily create conversions and revenue but is that going to be enough uh, what's that going to do in the long term what's how is that going to change the perception of the hotel on the long term and and you get into a, a vicious circle when you start doing those because they're so efficient then you do you want to do more and in the end that's all you're doing just like you know going on an OTA and, and increasing your commission rate so you get up in the ranking is, is like a bad drug uh, that, you know, gets you up in the ranking, gets you more revenue, and in the end of the month you realize how much you're paying in commissions is completely uh, out of proportion. And, and But now if you would take it down, you're suddenly going to lose because it has eaten up market share of other things. And that's not thinking through the brand, uh, you know, not thinking through the brand value and, and is this going to help or not the brand on the long run. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So basically, you, you will see it on a, on a logic cost of cost per acquisition and long-term value of the final customer, right? Correct. I, w I wouldn't necessarily pull in cost of acquisition. I think cost of acquisition is heavily... Uh, misinterpreted and misunderstood in in uh, in the entire travel industry. I believe if you market directly, no matter how you twist or turn, eventually if you add up all cost, it's more or less expensive as expensive to get in a customer as it is via via an OTA. I mean, having said that, and and in many times it's more. Yeah, having said that, if you do well in brand creation and brand recognition, uh, your 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 uh, uh, possibilities of driving prices up they increase by a multitude. Correct. Yeah. And in terms of promoting on on OTAs, whether it's flash sales or or uh, uh, let's say lower end deals, I'm not certain about you guys. You are more involved in marketing, but I don't get to pick and choose where my consumers are. Right? I just make sure that I get I have as much control as I can over the actual rate that I'm selling. And I'm not trying to influence whether my book, uh, my consumer books via Expedia or HotelDiscount.com. No, and I don't think we really can as such. I think that's a bit of a myth that you know we want to get in the right people. That maybe worked at the times when you know you could distribute through only certain travel agents and not OTAs, but now it's been democratized where everyone has access to. <clears throat> Everyone has access to, to all the data, and if you're not there, you're just going to be ignored. Uh, but as you said, I think that uh, I do think the, the the critical part where uh, cost of acquisition comes in uh, is is how much are you going to invest in making that brand? You know, if if you, your only self differentiator as a product, as a hotel product, is the colors of the curtains, you're going to have a problem. 
it, it is a problem because then you are commoditized as just a bed and a room. But if you've somehow managed to create a brand, uh, and where are you going to factor that? Is that cost of acquisition? Is that just is that the capex of building the hotel? But then you could reduce those by taking cheaper beds and so on and so forth. So that's where it becomes a bit of a how much are you going to put in as marketing costs, or how much is is just capex of, of building a, a hotel? Yeah, that makes sense. That makes total sense. But uh, just let me ask you something quick. You know, because uh, whenever and I'm, you know, uh, when it comes to when it comes to hotels, to me, hotels are just another another company. So at the end of the day, the only thing I I need. Uh, to achieve his profit, I really don't care where this co profit is coming from, as long as I'm, I'm, I'm getting some kind of profit. And again, I cannot really pick where my users are. But um, in in certain uh, you know realities, such as you know uh, Italy, for example, where the average average hotel is 35 room uh, independent hotel, and there's no really a lot of room for differentiation and where a distribution is so flat and so you know standard for everybody do you really think that you know it is really worth it to do all this struggle to try to get a, a reservation directly and maybe having a cost per acquisition uh, you know that is higher than the average OTA or my point being is, don't you think that uh, moving forward, marketing choices, the freedom to take some kind of marketing choices will only be something that bigger properties or branded hotel or luxury hotels will be able to do and all the rest of the distribution will just go flat? Mm. I'm not sure. I mean, Yes, if you don't do anything with your product, I think the difference will be the product. It's, it's as long as your product, you know, the differentiator won't be your distribution and marketing will be the product. And if the product is the same as everybody else's, um, and and uh, you know, we've I've worked on Italian hotels and 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 sometimes they are almost the same. That the bed cover is about the the biggest difference there is, and and uh, maybe the colors of of the curtains or the room but then you have an issue because then you are going to be entirely commoditized and then yes just go with the OTAs and, and suffer because they will dictate your price in the end they will say you have to do this and do that and that's the way it's going to be but if you can find you make ends meet doing that fine you know it's just you're at risk of the big distribution and that's the same for any producers of of of, of that goes into large scale distribution uh, they get held by the distributors okay got it yeah, and got even it. if that's the risk I, I even if that's the risk I'm not certain how well you can I can uh, you can hear me because I've some internet challenges I'm sitting in one of those hotels that is not different than the competition however I made them different right this is all about positioning this is where 90% of the industry take the wrong turn and they say I can be different um, and I'll speak a little uh, I'll give some examples in my presentation but you can set yourself apart uh, from the uh, from from the competition as long as you position yourself as differently okay? being a hotelier is not about a product and a bunch of rooms that you have I happen to have about 30 in, in, in the hotel that I'm sitting that's not what it's about it's about the environment and it's about being different and setting yourself apart from the competition even if you believe that the product is the same okay? I, yeah, yeah. I agree uh, okay I'm not sure I fully agree on that I mean obviously there is location and so forth that plays but it's still that's uh, I'd say when you it's like taking a phone and you hold it in your hand I, I have a, a Chinese knockoff of an iPhone together beside my iPhone when I pick it up I'm like okay yeah this is a knockoff this is not you know so the product in the end when you're gonna experience you know the experience needs to be there and the only way to show the experience is reviews and pictures 
So I'm not totally sure. Um, you know, you can everything everything in the near surroundings and everything in the near surroundings of a hotel. That's where hoteliers uh, mis make a huge mistake in what travel is about. Ho travel to consumers is not about the hotel. It's about everything outside. And yes, we can add a little bit of value, but really understanding the full experience, that's what uh, uh, allows us to create a better experience for consumers, even if the product is the same. And I can, I wish you would drop in uh, in the office someday so that I can share some actual results. Uh, uh, at a hotel where I'm sitting, I'm, I'm doing full management now here because we grew revenues with 150% in one year time. Room revenues, that is. Mm. You know, uh, I would agree with, you know, Gremko, I would completely agree with you what you just said that, you know, it's more around not the brick and mortar or the Wi-Fi or the breakfast are just not the things which people really care about. It's more about the millennials who care more about the experiences. I mean, the classic example, what you're looking at is with Airbnb. They don't have any of their hotels, but you know what the people are looking for is the kind of experiences. The millennials are the new millionaires now, and they've become younger as well, with the kind of spending power that they have. However, the kind of value that you create for them is purely around the experience, more than the, you know, the bed, or the location that that takes a second place now with the new leisure or the millennial travels that come in. Okay, there are just uh, can I go against the green for a second? I'm not, you know, I'm just a moderator, so I can basically say whatever I want now. But uh, do you? And I would like to have some kind of feedback from all of you. But uh, you know, do you really think that a 40 room cheap hotel by any city train station? should be focused on making this hotel unique and at least some kind of uh you know being different from the competitive set when going to a different route of standardization and keeping the service as you know as decent as possible can turn into a a, a better profit even on the you know on the medium long term so this is really what i want to understand there, there should be a point where making yourself unique doesn't make sense any longer you know where okay well, there's we don't have to push because this is what we have if we push we will have this this uh, investment to do and the profit will be will go down even if we increase the revenue we will probably be in this uh, profit zone in five years and we cannot afford it so that basically my question is is it really always worth it or is a buzzword being unique I think it, it really depends on your plan. I spoke to a hotelier who, who manages a hotel that is as, as cheap as it can get, uh, with two people working there, doesn't do room, doesn't take care of rooms and so on, and he's making more profit than than a, a hotel that's a boutique hotel with triple the rates, but uh, obviously doesn't have the same occupancy and has to have many more staff to, to fill it. What we see when you take care of luxury hotels, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, luxuries hotels make a lot more profit they also need to deliver a lot more service so it also depends <clears throat> where one wants to go um, you know where one wants to be there is obviously a certain security in having built a brand uh, even at a small level that uh, it's it comes an asset for for oneself so if one can sustain that brand and, and make it, then I would say do it because in the long run, having a brand does help, uh, does bring about a certain level of security in, in, in how one can sell and market in the future. But <clears throat> it doesn't mean it's more profitable. Um, it's just more sustainable. Okay, that's a very good answer. All right, guys. Any other opinion? Very nice conversation. I mean, I will keep going on that topics really for <laughs> days and days, but we have to move on. So, can I move to the next question to Remco, or do you want to share something from uh, from uh, from your point from your slide, Martin? Still. No, I think we've pretty much covered it. Uh, I mean, in summary, I believe these two functions of revenue and marketing are going to merge. 
uh, okay. because you cannot do one without the other. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to launch the first pool just to get some feedback from, uh, from the audience. So let's see. Uh, right. I was, do you see the, do you see the, um, let me see. The pop up, yeah. Yeah. The pool. Yeah. yeah. Can you see the pool? I mean, I see already people sharing their points. So the question basically is, uh, is the alignment between revenue marketing, you know, complex within your organization? So I see right now we have 50-50, 50-50 moving a little bit up. Well, let's say that the, the, the result is quite equal. I see the, um, the alignment is quite good, guys. So someone say yes, someone say no. So we, we need to help, the, of course, the 52% say yes. <laughs> so it's a complex situation. Right, so okay, Dan, thank you, thank you for uh, for participating to this first tool. So let's move to the next question, which is for uh, Remco. Remco, I'm going to share for you the slide, okay? So I know that you're having some issue with your internet connectivity, so much better maybe if I run the slide for you, all right? So basically, the double question for you is um, well, we told that. We said already that you are a founder of one of the biggest revenue management consultancy worldwide. So how would you describe the evolution that this role of the revenue manager has assumed professionally in the last 10 years and how today is aligning with the marketing department? And based on your experience, which are the most relevant KPI from revenue marketing that need to get on the same picture for a combined strategy, right? So. It's a double question. Let's see what is your view about that, and uh, I'll move the slide from you. Okay, so let's start from that. All right, thank you, uh, Enzo. So um, to take it on 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 the first question, and that's really what I've focused on in uh, in in this presentation, is um, how uh, revenue management has developed over. Uh, the past decade. Um, I think uh, that revenue management has evolved into a, uh, a profession where a lot is surrounded by systems and, and numbers. And I don't have to mention these uh, to you. These are familiar probably to most listeners. Uh, PMS, CRS, IBE, uh, payment automations, PCI compliancy, recently a GDPR, two way interfaces, meta search interfaces, and so on. Um, uh, it's most of the time up to revenue managers to, to at least manage and very often implement interfaces between all of these systems. Now, the challenge with all this automation, um, to my, in my experience, is that everything leads to automated data collection. And once we have generated uh, uh, automated links, we automatically switch towards standardization. It's to set up all things. I believe we've got it uh, uh, all right. And we do not necessarily rethink what we're doing and how we're doing it. And uh, uh, obviously, technology itself is not helping. Uh, uh, most technologies are moving into the cloud nowadays that have always been uh, uh, server-based. To keep up with technology is a task on its own, but at the same time, it's a big pitfall for most revenue managers to go towards standardization and, and no longer rethink uh, what, what they're doing. Um, Besides that, uh, revenue managers try, besides all the, the internal uh, interfaces and, and data collection, uh, uh, they, are, they are focusing on incorporating certain uh, uh, pieces of external data that are not necessarily directly uh, revenue management data, but I, uh, to give you an example, uh, uh, review score data. And um, revenue managers focus on the data, they focus on the numbers, and they forget about what's actually behind those numbers. And I'll I'll give you some examples uh, uh, later on about what I believe revenue managers should be should be doing instead. 
Um, I'm not certain uh, if you're clicking, Enzo, can you click to the next slide? The about. So, um, revenue managers uh, nowadays, I believe, are winning the popularity race. And um, it, it links straight into uh, the research that you've done, Enzo. Um, uh, I believe if you would have done the exact same research about 25 days ago, you would have at least half a million of, of marketeers appearing on your chart and probably somewhere between five and ten people involved in, in revenue managers. Um, so the popularity race is being won today by, by uh, revenue managers. And I believe that that's because revenue management is much easier than marketing. And it's easier uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one, revenue manager revenue management is easier to sell to non-revenue managers. Right? If I ask an average marketeer, so what have you done uh, in the past year, uh, then he will start a story about, about brand awareness uh, uh, and all kinds of in intangible data. If I ask the very same question to a revenue manager, he's going to tell you, I raised revenues with 7% equal to 600,000 euros last year. So a revenue manager has got a story that resonates with stakeholders, that resonates with general managers, that resonates with uh, owners, more, is, more, more easy than the marketing uh, story. It's simply easier to understand for finance people and, uh, and for owners. And besides that, numbers are black and white, right? They're not open to interpretation. And everything that marketeers do or almost everything is open to, to interpretation. Um, if, uh, if you can go to the next slide, uh, I'll give some uh, uh, other examples of what makes the life of a revenue manager so much easier than the life of a marketeer. Revenue managers can easily book quick successes. Right? They do that by not, incorporal, of not incorporating strategic goals, uh, but instead they head for a short-term success like a flash sale, right? They very often ignore all other sales, marketing and distribution strategies and hit a home run by launching a flash sale on, on Groupon, which many revenue managers in the recent past, the, the past burnt their fingers on. Um, hidden discounts. I am absolutely convinced that there is no one in, uh, in, in between the listeners that has not heard of Booking Genius. And unfortunately, I'm also convinced that uh, uh, there are listeners in, in, the, in, the, in the crowd that are actually participating on Booking uh, Genius, completely ignoring the impact that it has on the overall, uh, uh, on the overall business, not just on costs, uh, but also on, uh, on, on brand value uh, and, and not to mention other uh, elements. Right? It links into what Martin said earlier on. He also said it's easy to generate bigger numbers by just raising uh, 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 commissions on a specific channel. Um, uh, again, here I fully agree with Martin. Revenue managers, they touch the power of the world via OTAs. There's not a single hotel, not a single chain that comes even close to the marketing power that uh, the major OTAs have, uh, OTAs have on, the, on the world. Um, another short-term success, revenue managers can fill gaps. They can push for ref power. Those are things that that are not possible for a marketeer to um uh, to to do. And with all these quick successes, what they do, they unfortunately consistently steer away from direct business. Right on the other hand side, marketeers on the next uh, slide, they must strategically invest in brand. There is no such thing as a short-term success. Besides, just maybe revamping your website, right? complete new design, it may look good, but most people that have been involved uh, in, 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 in web design know that a new design and the enthusiasm about a new design wears off very, very quickly. And it's nothing else but an emotion. Okay? There is no measurable success that comes immediately on the short term. For marketeers, uh, obtaining numbers and data are an uphill struggle. right? more and more data are hidden, they're more and more complex to obtain. Marketing strategies, they go over a variety 
of uh, if well executed over a variety of different uh, marketing channels and they are not as easy to obtain and to compose as it is to extract a report for a revenue manager simply from a PMS that contains all revenues okay so marketeers they sp they, they they bring strategic results only and they need to sell a story I mentioned earlier on where a revenue manager brings numbers black and white marketeers need to sell a story and they need to create believers in that story uh, a much more complex role um, and obviously they only manage a limited part of the business marketeers cannot influence uh, uh, indirect channels um, uh, and, and, and they shouldn't as much as they influence the direct channels um, and, and then um, with all the new, techno new technology developments that we mentioned and, and talking about for example uh, uh, meta search um, but also pop-up advertising um, enthusiastic marketeers have trialed and most of them have, have probably also failed left or right. Okay. These trial and errors are visible and not always accepted by stakeholders and marketeers more often than revenue managers suffer consequences for that and mainly often in, uh, in budgets. Um, setting them uh, uh, up against each other, uh, each other, what revenue managers don't do well necessarily is, uh, is rethinking guest experience. Um, they're simply bad in thinking about guests and customer journey. Uh, most of the time, they're not actively uh, uh, involved with guests, and they literally forget that we're a people business. They focus on automation, and instead, we should realize that we're a people business. Um, and therefore, often, unfortunately, revenue managers, they lack edginess and unique ideas. Um, Mentioned reporting, I already touched upon, uh, on, on, on this on the next slide. Um, revenue managers, they get easy data, right? The basics are in the PMS. It's exported on a daily basis. And when you do a comparison of one day to another, you've got what's called pickup, right? And if you have all, of, all, of, uh, all your business together, you've got your on the books for marketeers. Uh, they, they need to um, export and explain all the intangible and, and complex matter to start with. I personally believe, and, uh, and I see it up close far too often, um, that if it was up to revenue managers, we would probably no longer rethink our positioning, our brand, our communication strategies, and possibly not even something basic as our room types, which, as you probably know, and mentioned as uh, a they're yieldable. So, to me, it all boils down to this yes and, and, and no um, contradiction. I believe, contrary to, to what Martin said, I believe that revenue management and marketing uh, will not merge as such. I believe um, that in most cases, they probably even should merge. And the reason for that is simple. Marketing and sales for that, are responsible for getting a yes of consumers they need to get as yes many yeses as possible as many consumers at the top of the funnel and i believe that the 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 the, uh, the job of a revenue manager is actually to select those customers that we do want and that we don't want so therefore i believe that that actually there are very uh, contradicting de departments in what they need to execute execute in the very very end Okay. Then um, the challenge uh, uh, at, at departmental level. Um, not certain if you, uh, if you if if you've realized, but I have far too often. Revenue management can deliver without marketing. The other way around, however, however um, marketing hardly delivers without great revenue management. So I'm going to get into into some examples uh, uh, over here. Uh, price is used incorrectly by both parties. Um, revenue managers use price incorrectly because they often are not truly in control over, over their pricing. And I mentioned examples with flash sales and genius earlier on. Marketeers, however, however, uh, however are often uh, um, uh, misled to believe that the OTA message also works to to do great direct marketing and i'm not a believer that that messaging should be, should be similar 
Okay. So to assist marketing departments better, I believe that revenue managers should become pricing masters and they should have control over all pricing on all sales channels, direct or indirect, at all times. And, uh, and we were discussing just before the call, it's getting more difficult by the day. Uh, it seems that booking up nowadays is even into a meta search type of displaying uh, uh, rates and is able to display wholesale rates, GDS rates, you name it. So then what, uh, and I'm moving on to uh, the next slides. Um, I end up at, at trademark protection. This I believe is a um, core to successful online uh, marketing campaigns. And um, it's where uh, uh, revenue managers and marketeers should be working uh, together. Um, uh, via trademark protection, you can avoid OTAs buying your brand. And um, if there's something important online, is to protect your brand from other parties buying it. So request a, a trademark and actually protect it uh, uh, actively is one of the elements. Um, number two, rethink positioning. And I'll give you an example of a property that, that many people know I've managed for about six or seven years um, already. Um, this is a property, a very high-end property in the center of Paris. And uh, they've also ha always had a tremendous positioning. However, all positioning wears off eventually. And by listening, and studying our customers consequently and intensely, we figured out that we read, we need to redo our room type because what used to be our Opera Garnier rooms, tremendously well positioned, as you can see by the picture, and our, our Atelier d'Artistes, all parts of Secrets of Paris, Paris um, are now actually uh, uh, getting tremendous rates because we figured out that, they're, that, that uh, our average leisure consumer adores our jacuzzis. So we have repositioned our rooms and we've made a split between jacuzzi rooms and, uh, and our regular rooms. Then another element uh, for revenue managers to work with uh, uh, marketeers, um, push to action pop-ups uh, and per persuasive messaging. This can be done by, by third parties. Uh, but this element it links in straight to control over all your prices. This works very, very well, and it works only if you've got a full control over, over your pricing strategy. So this specific property is offering, it's clear, the direct uh, the best rates uh, direct, and they offer discounts as long as you know uh, uh, the discount code, which as uh, a, a, a small add-on is mentioned. On the, on the website everywhere you go. Okay. So in this case, you can get a 5% um, discount. Best available rates should always be available direct and not indirect. So revenue managers beware, don't give uh, all your eggs to, to um, the big OTAs and run away with their uh, packages or, or um, so-called hidden discounts. Your best rates should be online on your on your own website um, and and here's just an example of how uh, how to implement that should I Minister search advertising Remuco, I, I'm on the right slide because I'm running the slide for you I just want to make sure that I'm on the right slide um, I have hit uh, selective meta search advertising so I'm, I'm going not certain how many slides you've missed the next one maybe Yep. Uh, all right, cool. This one. Oh, next one. Right. So selective meta search advertising, uh, we touched upon it uh, earlier on, uh, but this is where revenue management and marketing should work very close together. Uh, revenue managers set up rates, they program uh, the, the booking engine correctly, and they make sure that the links are built correctly together with the uh, uh, marketing department and very often a, a third party to ensure that your lowest rate actually displays, in this case, like on TripAdvisor, the official hotel site, as you can see at the top. Okay? This can only be done if revenue management and marketing work closely together. 
Yeah? And if revenue management has got a very solid control over, uh, over pricing. Yeah? Then on to the last slide, Enzo. Uh, uh, these are just ideas, but I believe I'm running uh, out of time. Um, a couple of ex ideas f uh, where marketing and revenue management should work together. Marketing uh, would do greatly by building landing pages to target specific customers, right? Dive into your niche, dive into a specific segments, but also create experience. This does not necessarily have to be information about your hotel or about your product as, as per the, 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 the questions that Simone was asking earlier on. Okay? This is content that, that links into your, uh, into your destination and to, into activities, um, uh, into uh, uh, local uh, other entrepreneurs uh, with which you can generate demand for very specific uh, niches. And um, your success is defined by how well marketing and revenue management work to one, understand the consumer, and two, execute online. Okay. Um, uh, another idea uh, is, is, is to, uh, uh, to, to generate post-stay emails, right? increase loyalty, improve online reviews and rankings. Again, another element uh, where, where um, revenue managers and marketeers uh, should work closely together. All right, so a lot of nice things, Remco. Thank you so much. I think that Simone was um, was going to ask you a question, right, Simone? You wanted to ask a question to Remco? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, thank you for, for you know, the, the amazing uh, presentation and uh, this revenue management edge on it. Uh, I just have a question because uh, you said, and you, you made it quite clear that at least for a revenue management point of view marketing is pretty intangible but is it i mean every time and i work in in marketing so i'm biased of course but uh, uh you know as Sergio zeman once said if you cannot be tracked then it's not marketing then it's something else but it's not marketing and i you know with the level of sophistication we have right now think about design for example design is trackable there is there are heat maps neuromarketing UX analysis, video recording, eye tracking maps, and can be tracked by the, you know, by the second. And uh, paid search can be tracked in, uh, you know, even with different level of attribution. Last click, uh, first click, uh, you know, com com uh, assisted conversion. So, sure, if you're if you're talking about, you know, radio, TV ads, maybe you know, if we don't have Nielsen families to back us up, maybe we. Don't have to any way to track what we're doing, but uh, I think, at least from my perspective, that you know it's it is a question of stakeholders not understanding that marketing is not magic and it, it is trackable, you know, and it is it's a science and it's a pretty it's a pretty exact one, and you know, and, and if you just that's why I hate buzzword like awareness, brand awareness, or you know, direct or stuff like that because. Again, my idea of marketing is if I cannot track it, that it's not marketing. It's just burning money out of the window. And I know, you know, revenue managers tend to have this uh, uh, view of marketers as, you know, uh, money burners. But I just want to understand if it is really just the perception of the marketing today that is, is biased or is not up to date. Or do you really think that there is an aspect that maybe I don't see that is totally intangible when it comes to marketing? No, I, I, I didn't mean to say that marketing is absolutely intangible. I mean it's 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 more intangible than you gave a number of uh, performance indicators, and I don't disagree with anybody of them. I'm just saying to the general stakeholder that's not a marketeer, and that's also not a revenue manager. Right? You can pay, you can talk about heat maps, right? And the average stakeholder will not understand what it is, right? I happen to know what a heat map is, and I built my first one, I believe, a decade ago. However, the average hotel owner, for example, will not have uh, will have never seen a heat map. If you tell a uh, uh, the, that same owner we generated three million euros this year, they say, "Ah, that I understand." So, to that stakeholder, 
it's more tangible. I fully agree that both are tangible. And even brand awareness, you can make it tangible. It does not mean that the listener at the other end of the table also perceives it to be tangible. So that's more where I'm, uh, I'm leaning towards. Does that answer your question? Totally, and this is exactly because this is exactly how I feel about it. And uh, you know, it's 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 pretty hard when it comes to numbers. When it comes to you know to, to revenue, being uh, if you will something accessible in terms of knowledge to pretty much everybody is it's it's easier to explain. But you know, sometimes there is. Uh, this, I think that this friction that there is between the two departments, either they will merge or not at some point. Uh, I think a lot of the of the of this friction comes from a misunderstanding of what the other department does and how the other department works in terms of KPI and understanding what the goals are and what returns are. So yeah, now that you explain like. This I totally agree with uh, with you. I just wanted to understand what was your your edge, but uh, I think we 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 both see the same way. Thank you. Cool, man. So let's move to the. Um, so thank you, Remco. First of all, again, so very cool. Thanks for your you know expertise. And again, for all the people attending the webinar, at the end of the webinar, guys, if you write me to marketing at rickton.com. But anyway, I, I can send you the slide of uh, all, all the presentation. So let's move now to the next pool, um, which is one second. Let me get it. Uh, where is it? All right. So the second question was, I can get it. So are you giving more relevance to marketing or revenue, basically? So or both of them. So let's see what people are saying. If marketing or revenue is more relevant, so it would be nice to see what is the percentage. So we now have 60% uh, to revenue, 45 votes. But I don't see people clicking on marketing. That's a very little, 8%. Right. So we got. 7% marketing, 49% revenue, 44 bots. All right, so just to understand your point of view, guys. So thank you for participating to this poll. Right, so let's move now to the last guest, uh, Anupam, right? So I'm going to run the slide for you, Anupam, too. So please guide me. When, anytime you need uh, me to change the slide, just to you know, say change the slide. <laughs> And basically, what I would like to know from you, understanding from, uh, you know, I see here something really, which would really put in the same basket, you no know, revenue market, because price intelligence and online reputation somehow influence the, you know, the revenue of, uh, of the hotel. And then somehow price intelligence is more related to the revenue manager, maybe online reputation more to the market. But both of them are influencing the, the business, the, the, the success of a strategy, right? So can you share with us, you know, as you are running those two particular products with Regain, Optima and Brengain, you know, how those two factors are impacting the hotel bots online? So thank you, Enzo. I mean, uh, in terms of the Vantage data points, uh, for taking all the strategic decisions. I mean, uh, you very rightly said that what is so, you know, basically the hotel ring industry is completely based upon the dress and the address. So by the dress, it means that, you know, how you dress up yourself and how do you address your clients to. Now that's somewhere and everywhere translates back in to the kind of price points that you're charging and the kind of reputation which your hotels holds. So uh, the first and foremost, which let me just talk about the price point as well. So every day, maybe, you know, the people across in the room and, you know, on the e-room e rather, I'd say, you know, they, they would be knowing that, you know, okay, I've checked my rates, I checked my competitions rate, but have they done enough or have you even looked at the, you know, the newer challenges? The technology has evolved so much. So I give you an example. One of my friends is a product manager for one of the largest ride aggregators in the world. And, you know, 
they do pricing by the type of the timings that, you, that are there in place, by the type of people who are requesting for the cab ride, you know, the battery in your mobile phone, even in terms of the kind of operating system your mobile phone has. You'd be quite surprised to see that, you know, the rates that you book the same ride from the same destination, from the same place of starting and the destination at the same point of time from an Android versus an iPhone or a Microsoft or a Symbian phone, they're absolutely different from this here. Now, this is the kind of new intelligence that we are battling with. So if you move on to the next screen, I will just explain it to you uh, what I'm talking about. So you see, okay, so this is how the screen would look like, you know, when you search for your hotels on any of these two OTAs. However, would you know that, you know, who ate your lunch, actually? The competition set that which you're looking at, you, you would... You know, you do that by the distance from the hotel, the star classification, the number of rooms or probably by the price point. That is something which is no longer the competition. If you press, uh, go ahead. And so, so when you see over here that uh, you see that this is something which the, the properties which are located, you know, are positioned above and below you in terms of these OTAs are the ones who are actually your indirect competition set. Now, why do I call these as an indirect competition set? And what is it that you as hoteliers can do to target this as well? Now, again, you can run, run, comp you can run campaigns or promotions on these OTAs. You can do more marketing. The most important bit wherein the revenue and the marketing guys come in together is the kind of content that you publish. It's very, very logical and without it goes without saying it's a no brainer that the kind of content that you have on all of these sites, there has to be the parity of the words that are written. Now, today, if your hotel is listed on Agoda being a pet friendly, and however, on booking.com, it does not say that, you will are, have a very strong chance of losing out. Anupam, we, we lost you. Cannot hear you. No, me neither. Anupam, can you hear us? We lost your audio. Can I hear your speech? We have some technical issue. That's the good part of a live webinar. <laughs> As usual, there is always some, you know, we talk about improving technology, guys, and sometimes the Wi-Fi or Internet is always still an issue. <laughs> Can you we should do our next one by a, by a fax. <laughs> Let's see. Anupam, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Now, yes. Yes. Now, yes. Okay. So, okay. Great. 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 So, so uh, you know, I, I'm not sure uh, till what point, point did you hear. So what I was talking about is that, you know, uh, as revenue managers or the hoteliers, you need to drive down the importance of the, you know, the kind of content that you have on your on your websites across all these multitude of social media, all these channels as well. Because, you know, today, let's say you are a hotel who's listed on Agoda or any of these OTAs as a hotel which has, uh, you know, a pet friendly hotel. However, the same is not listed as a non pet friendly hotel on booking.com. While the hotel facilities do not remain the same, they remain the same, you have a very bad chance of losing out the kind of people who could have potentially converted for you. So the marketing is not just about going and pushing out, you know, doing all the pay per -click, click campaigns and doing everything right. The whole algorithm of all these search engine pages works on the basis of how much is your content in parity when these crawlers go out especially from sites like google bing they when they find that kind of content parity across that same kind of information similar i would rather say is found across your organically your search rank improves when people search for hotels or when it comes out as well so that is where you know you could have a bit wherein you can be looking at as well could you move on to the next slide and so so the next bit where you look at is the one which I was talking to you about is the geo source tracking. So are you even looking at? So when you look at this example over here, now these are two different sites. One is the Traveloka and the other one's TripAdvisor. So we have a way that you know now the the OTAs are so ways and you know the booking win, booking pattern has evolved so much. You see the difference over here. Now in Traveloka, we used the same hotel for the same duration to be booked using an iPhone. 
and the same kind of a hotel was tried booking over an android device you see there is a difference in the price that comes in right there it's not that if the person is just the same because the booking pattern and people realize that if the kind of devices that you're using the kind of ips that you're coming in from so like the tripadvisor india site and the tripadvisor us sites and all these websites all have different rates altogether are you monitoring all these areas as well what is your marketing coming in place because till the point of time there is a parity and whole what what point kinds of different rate points are you looking at that's the most important thing for you presently in order to make sure that you're right there and marketing your product in the right place at the right price as well so that that's around the rates which we just which which i discussed about so the other bit which comes around the reviews which is over on the next slide is now we did an analysis of that how exactly is the reviews landscape evolving globally you see the kind of stats that are right there google saw a surge of 130% in the terms of the reviews that they've been capturing over a period of time will tripadvisor dropped now the change in dynamics is there suddenly because this is how very serious the market has become in terms of the reviews today you want to buy even the smallest of kind of things the pin or a needle you would go and try finding reviews on that not literally though of course but yes today the buyer is more and more evolved he or she is aware about what needs to be bought and they really want the value for money that they are trying to pay or get for that as well for that is your content correct content legitimate content and the right kind of reviews present or marketed in the right sources in the face of people to help you kind of convert enough while you're doing everything right you've got the best of the hotels your linen is crisp you're doing the right service but are your content the kind of reviews what people are writing about are your price points in the right place marketed to the right people at the right time that is something which is the nuvo age you know gives you those vantage points in terms of the marketing of your brand altogether on the next slide where we where we look at that you know so here it's a no brainer that you know how is it that what we do right so when we spoke about so in in the earlier slides when i had given an example of you know so so now it's now the whole the new set of people are the new millennials who are traveling the new market segment that has come in are the leisure travelers leisure travelers is somebody typically just like me or just like you as well we normally so leisure traveler is somebody who is a mix of goes on the prime facie purpose of traveling of that person is for business however they extend by a day or two for the purpose of leisure as well now these are the people who are the ones which is the new market segment which are a mix of both of them and the, are the new millennials and where as i said earlier that you know the whole concept of how people experience things how people you know come at terms and how they consume content be it from social media any of these sites people are not just checking into your hotel people the first thing what people actually do in is checking into the facebook of your hotel or people you know when you have when you order a dish let's say or anything to eat in a restaurant the first thing that people do it is tweet it or put it on instagram as well the kind of hashtags that you have the kind of food presentation that you do those are the kind of experiences which people are looking in for i'll give you a very small example on my last trip to singapore uh, i had traveled with my friend and this was about a year back so there was this there was this gentleman and you know he was having a turkish ice cream stall now it has a very different way of you know preparing that ice cream with a long tong in his hand and you know he he flips over the ice cream cone and everything that whole process of serving that one ice cream cone was was lasted for about 5 minutes instead of the 5 or 10 seconds which normally is now if you ask anybody an old and anybody in the earlier days that he say that hey why would anybody wait even for more than 5 seconds to get served for their ice cream cone now this is the kind of difference that you see now people care more for the experiences so while i had that ice cream cone of mine and waited 5 minutes i would say yes impatiently because you know i really wanted that ice cream but patiently too because the kind of experience that he was creating for me you know doing all of that flaring with it and everything there were 20 people all around me who were taking videos and within the first or the 5 minutes and 30 seconds it was all posted and published on social media with the result that person marketed his act or the experience which he delivered right at that same point of time now this is something which you as hoteliers need to ensure that you know are those people tagging you or are you creating those experiences first 
So when you create those experiences first, what are the, are the right kind of hashtags being thrown in at the people right there to tag it right there and then. So how do you build your journey right from the place where the check-in happens during the stay and check out. So when you look at it, so uh, it says about that, it calls about the entire, the check-in, check-out and the entire journey. So um, Enzo, could you move on to the next slide? Just a second. Yeah. So, of course, it does. Where is it that all of it sits that, you know, when you get that operation excellence, the kind of experiences that you're building in, you obviously elevate your reputation, which in turn builds up your OTA and meta ranking and you can charge a premium for this quality. Now, why is it that I can say with a lot of conviction? You're, you're, the millennials are the new travelers. Now, millennials do not talk to each other, right? They rely more on rather than going out and trying to talk to somebody, they would talk to their phones, you know, look at the social media content on and the kind of reviews and the publications and the blogs, you know, on for your hotel or the facility, even before coming into your place. Now, are you present or marketed well enough on all those sites well completely to make sure that they come into the right place? Now we ran this study with a couple of hotels that uh, you know uh, that are using my product for reputation. When you move on to the next slide, you'll see that we did an analysis for them in terms of that where is it that how exactly does it make a difference? So when you look at it for the Jan month of January, this is a hotel, uh, this is a mot motel which is located in, uh, in in the United States. It's somewhere in the state of Tennessee. And here in the month of January, the rates that we're charging was close to around hundred dollars. And the overall reputation score was about 7.53%. Moving on, they took their reputation like really very seriously and there was just an increase of 5% which led to a 25% increase in terms of the ADRs directly which affects the top line. Mind you, the market conditions did not change. The events which were happening were the same. There were no holidays that caused a spike or a delta earlier. That's how serious people are for the reputation. The millennials really care for those experiences that you create for them. The millionaires have become all more younger. Now, you know, probably five years back or 10 years back, you could play, put a place, plate of pasta in front of somebody and say that this is the best pasta in the world. But today you cannot do that because that millennial has already traveled and, you know, had that kind of pasta sitting in a Tuscany coffee shop right in Italy there and then. Those are the kind of much more aware people that we're dealing with, how we consume content. So, you know, when you look at the market marketplace dynamics, when you're looking at there is an integration and, you know, uh, consolidation happening at all levels. I think the bigger brands are begin, becoming bigger. The Marriott's and Star Wars are, being, are merged. The, the, the booking is uh, booking in Expedia. Uh, there's a duopoly where it comes for the OTAs as well. It's happening everywhere. So what is it that you can do really right? So I think the right the, the right things is how do you funnel that demand? It comes in from the economies of scale in terms of what you continue to do, what you're doing really right. Build up those kind of experiences, which is very. We lost again, Anupam. What's wrong with your microphone today, man? Can you hear us? Hello, Pam. Hello. Let, let's wait. Just a second. I think he was at the end of the presentation anyway. Hello, Pam. Can you hear us? Hello. Maybe we should just. Um just uh, check if we got any question and we'll wrap it up. I think, I think he has a, some issue with the audio. Anyway, I'll move on. Can you hear yeah, I think it's back. Okay, sorry about that. So, yeah, so the, when you move on to the next slide is something which I was talking about that, you know, how, how do you see that in terms of that there is one of the hotels which did not look at the reputation very, very seriously. You see that? how sensitive the whole market has become the millennials are towards that the reputation bit the reputation score just dropped in by a year by a 0.61 percent they lost about close to 17 percent on their ADRs 
that's how serious you know uh, the people are there with terms of the reputation as well how well do you get your reputation together so being as hoteliers like what i was saying was that how do you funnel that demand is continue doing what you do really well you know how the kind of food and beverage experiences the kind of the lodging experiences that you build the economies of scale is something and uh, is something which you can capitalize on to get the marketing and the revenue for your hotel right so that's all folks and uh, thank you so much for being a patient audience if there are any questions i'd be happy to take them on thank you so much anupam really interesting sorry for some issue of the audio but i think everybody got your points so thanks again and i think we finished guys so let me just go to the next slide which will show you what is going to be the next agenda so we have one more webinar in september which is going to be the last available room actually is the title of the entire service and then in november we will talk more about the price value uh, in January, we will go through the 2018 overview. So we look at the news and trend from travel in the hospitality industry. And then we will have a revenue manager perspective, part two. Actually, it's going to be revenue vs. marketing. So I made a mistake here, sorry. Uh, this is going to be at the second part of the webinar today. Uh, but this is going to be in March. So before to say bye, um, just want to remind you guys that in case you would like to get a free audit, from us again uh, we're gonna help you you know around red shopping online reputation online distribution channel management so just drop it down an email to me marketing at redgain.com so i can support you guys in any type of freedom so let me say hello to remco martin anupam simone can you open the webcam guys actually so we can look at you for the last time let me open the webcam hi simone so Martin is still there, Remco. Remco, at the end of the day, you had a very great connectivity, so <laughs> it was successful, man. I think it you got it. It didn't go really well for me where the connectivity was <laughs> really it dropped off in <laughs> at times. Right, so guys, really thank you so much um, for uh, participating at this webinar. So I'm going to ask you I quickly transferred my promise to Anipa. <laughs> and, uh, That's all right. I take the ice bucket challenge for you then. Right, so my my last question to all of you guys is: If you have to, uh, you know, born again, would you like to be revenue manager or marketing manager? Simone, you go first. Uh, I think I would like to be a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with your <laughs> the... I, I don't think so. I just want to sit on the grass for you know and check all the cows going. And you know I'm a vegetarian, so I'm not even going to eat them. So I will be totally useless. So yeah. <laughs> what about marketing. you, Anupam? What do you want to do in the future? If you burn again, you want to be revenue or marketing? I think the general manager because he uh, takes care of the both. If you ask me, uh, would be a revenue manager because the revenue manager does everything. He's like the one man with a lot of hats on his head, a revenue manager, the operations guy, you know, the marketing guy. He does each and everything responsible. And still, uh, every day in the morning meeting, general manager asks him, where is my revenue? Cool. Man. What about you, Martin? Uh, marketing. You know me. Again? Uh, I give you the chance to live a second life. You want to be by the choices, the choice between the two, uh, the numbers will kill me. Numbers is boring, man. Excel or you should give us, yeah, you numbers should are good. Give numbers us are a good. Third option. <laughs> Too much. You should give us, you should give us a third option. You know, revenue managers, marketing, or rock stars. And you know, if you do that, we will answer with a little more honesty. <laughs> Which means more what? Rockstar. <laughs> what about you, Remco? If you were born again, what would be more revenue or more marketing? I would take them on both and both with both hands. They're both very, very interesting uh, pieces of material uh, uh, that allow for, for, for a, a lifelong road of discovery. Cool. 
Right, so you are not enough. One is not enough. All right, cool. So thanks nope. again, guys. Really, it was a really interesting today participate with you. Um, again, for everyone still there, just drop me an email, marketing.regain.com. I can send you the slide. Uh, I can help you to get a free audit report about red shopping, online reputation, and online distribution, guys. So I'm here available for anything. So and uh, let's connect at the next session on uh, September. Thank you, guys, and uh, see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank bye, you. Bye. Thank you.